Day. Prestar Community Church of the Nazarene, or Prestar for short, which started on January 2, 2022, and which is based out of Kelowna, continues to see God move in mighty ways among our members and new attendees, especially since in-person Sunday worship services started last year post-pandemic. For 10 months last year, we held our worship services in an old building where air condition during summer months was frequently non-existent and buckets had to be used to catch dripping water from the roof during snow season once the snow had melted. But the almost sorry state of our location did not prevent us from meeting gladly to worship and fellowship in the spirit of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. New attendees would come and return, not minding these inconveniences. March last year, my wife Eileen invited a lady named Elorraine and her three-year-old daughter Elora to church through Messenger. I am mentioning her name and her daughter's name with permission. Eileen was involved in sorting out this lady's legal issues that stem from her friends and her ex-husband's ex betrayal. Eileen and his, this lady lost contact afterwards, but reconnected through Facebook. Elorraine's marriage broke down in late 2019 when she found out that the friend whom she brought in to care for her daughter Elora was having an affair with her husband right at their home. Talk about the nanny you hired to take care of your daughter, but who also took it upon herself to take care of the child's father. The pain of betrayal was too much that she quickly left for Philippines with her daughter during the holidays. While there, she went to a popular TV program called Report into Tulpo to ask help for the nanny's deportation. While the TV program was not able to help in deporting the nanny, the program succeed or succeeded to expose the betrayal to general public as it was posted on YouTube, which now have uh, been viewed more than 10 million times. There were subsequent videos that also went viral. When her viral, viral video neither brought fortune nor pain to her, it made her realize that if millions of strangers sympathize with her, then God who created all these viewers must also care for her and her pain. When Eileen initially invited her, Elorraine made the usual excuse of working on Sundays or doing other things, but Eileen kept inviting her anyway until she finally relented. Around this time last year, we had a scheduled Sunday worship at the park. There were only 11 of us, including my wife and three children. Elorraine and Elora, her housemate and the housemate's daughter, and other new lady and her four-year-old son. For some reason, everyone was camping or vacationing elsewhere, except for us. I felt, I felt a tinge of discouragement, but God reminded me that our small number was a perfect opportunity for evangelism. And so we had a mini Bible study about God's love and Jesus good news of salvation. Elorraine shared that she grew up in the Philippines attending popular sect that carries the name of Christ but believes that he is just a man and that salvation is by works and faithful obedience to the church's rules. That Sunday morning, God opened her eyes to the truth that God out of his love for humanity sent Jesus to die on the cross to pay for our sins. She received Jesus by faith as her personal Lord and Savior. Elorin is now an active member of Press Start, serving in various ways, including opening her home for Bible studies and fellowship. When Elorin is only in her early 30s, I can say that she is the spiritual godmother of at least 15 people in our church and counting. Her story of betrayal, pain, healing, and forgiveness is a testimony to God's enduring love and reconciling and 
redeeming ministry of the church. Respectfully submitted, Merlin Maningas.